If you are a Sierra Adventure game fan, then this is the video for you. We're talking with Sean Mills, author of the Sierra Adventure book. He's going to share the nitty and the gritty about behind the scenes and on the scenes of the legendary gaming developers. In part one, we meet with Sean and talk about his unique qualifications to write the book. In part two, we discuss the book itself, the behind the scenes stories from the developers, the good, the bad, and the ugly, told in a way that would make Clint Eastwood jealous. So untuck your shirt and stop yelling! Let's put our adventure cap on. Morning, Sean. Afternoon, evening, Joshua. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, it's it's tomorrow over there. It is. It's the future. I'm speaking to you from the future. <laughs> Through the power of the internet, Zoom. Yes. Yes. That's that's incredible. We have Sean Mills. Welcome back, or welcome front, if it's the first time that you have joined us on Weird Gaming Adventure. Sean Mills, I'm excited to have you today. Why don't you introduce yourself? I'm excited to be here, Josh. It's uh, look, I'm Sean. I've written a book, The Sierra Adventure. And uh, yeah, just here to talk about that a bit today. Yeah. Oh, that is fantastic, Sean. And I am super, super excited that we're going to be talking about the book. We're going to get weird. It's uh, we're going to go point. We're going to go click. We're going to go adventure style. So before we do, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what got you started, but before we actually start talking about the book itself. Yeah, look, i um been making adventure games with uh, my good friend Stephen Alexander, Infamous Quests, Infamous mm -hmm. Adventures. We did um, a couple of remakes of some Sierra games, and we released uh, Quest for Infamy and Order of the Thorn later on. So uh, real love, real passion for adventure games. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and... And if you've not heard of Quest for Infamy, then you might not have been paying attention to adventure games over the past uh, 10 years or so. So mm. we are really happy to have you. And as we stated, this has opened the door for you to show your fandom of adventure games, to show your fandom of Sierra itself creating a book. Before we talk about that, though, yep, let's shake it out. Let, let, let's get weird. Okay. Let's get weird a little bit. So I'm going to ask you a few little questions kind of to check your yep. bona fides here. Okay. Oh, okay. Sierra related. All right. Yep. So it's just a few little questions and we're going to go ahead and put two minutes on the clock and let's get started. Okay. Cedric the owl, keep him or eat him. Oh, keep him. Okay, keep him. I know that's not the right answer for most Sierra fans, but keep him. I like him. <laughs> it's not the popular answer, but it's the right uh, answer. We'll keep yeah. it PC, right? Okay. Did you learn any moves while playing Leisure Suit Larry? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> not a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Roger Wilco. Do you consider him a hero or someone who falls butt backwards into success? Uh, someone who falls butt backwards into success. Yeah. I, I think things, I think that's the fun thing about Roger. Things just happen around him and he comes out smelling great. Pun that, intended. <laughs> he is the Guybrush Threepwood of Sierra. Just yes. falls into, into success and into trouble mm. at the same time. Wonderful series. Okay. So another funny little question here. What is more... Uh, Let's be more, more grammatically correct here. What is scarier, Gabriel Knight, one, the story, or Tim Curry's Narlin's Draw? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, uh, oh, that's a tough question. I love Tim Curry, but I have to go with Tim Curry on that one. So, yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't feel right. It looks right for the character, but it, when you think of Tim Curry, I just don't think it feels right. I, I'm right there with you. I feel like I am mm. watching Pennywise the Clown 
saying, yes. tell me something about voodoo over and over <laughs> and over again. I oh, think boy. of the butler from Clue. Oh, that's, it, that's who it, I think of. Yeah. It's hard not to. It's hard yeah. not to. Okay. That's, that's awesome. So now we're going to get a little bit more serious here. Let's talk cool. about the book. Let's talk yeah. about the book. All right. So as, as we mentioned, you, uh, you created uh, some games already. You yeah. are a fan. So why don't you give us a little bit of a synopsis as to what the book covers? Okay. So the book covers that was actually my first really difficult decision to make when I wrote the book. What am I going to cover? Because it is such a big topic. So really I, I cover Sierra itself. I don't go into a lot of the subsidiary companies, the dynamics, the bright stars. I touch mm -hmm. on them a little, but mostly it's about Sierra itself from 1980 through to 1999 when they stopped developing themselves. So that was sort of the window I gave myself. Um, which is a big window. It's still 20 years, but um, I was really fascinated by the idea of the continually um, innovating uh, all the innovations that Sierra had. So that was really uh, the focus. If you look at, uh, you know, I, I talk about a lot of the games, of course, in the book and a bit of the history of the company and the corporate stuff and all that sort of thing. Uh, but it all really does tie into the innovations and, the steps they took and the things they developed that are now industry standards in, you know, trillion dollar industry. And yeah, so that's really the focus you see where they've, where they've come in, they've brought something new to the market, say the, um, you know, the Japanese games, they brought those to the American market um, or mm -hmm. the Western market or um, rotoscoping characters or, you know, uh, music and voice acting talking about Cedric, you know, voice acting and all that sort of stuff. So all these innovations that we don't even think about now, that's what fascinated me that they're the, they're the rock on which it's all built. So, yeah. Yeah. You know what? We recently put out a, a video series about uh, Sierra versus Lucas arts and basically who was better. And one of the criterias um, was as who actually innovated the industry more I was shocked in doing my research and I don't know why I was, I shouldn't have been, but I was shocked at just how much innovation that Sierra actually put into, into the market there from, like you mentioned, voice acting, I mean, graphics, they were the Sierra rock. And so, I mean, I tell you what, you're, you're living the American dream over there in <laughs> Australia. You're, yep. you're following your dream. So, mm -hmm. You had mentioned to me, and and I did a little you know research prior to talking uh, to you that that you're you're an author, uh, or at least that's what you, you know you're you went to school for, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, yep. Yeah. You've Journalist. done a, a lot of work uh, for adventuregamers.com, which you're you're great at. Put out some great columns and and such, and so this seemed like it was right up right up your alley. And so, would you say that you went about this book from a fan's perspective? And do you think that is something that, that would appeal to us as fans because of that? Yeah, I, if I'm to be perfectly honest, the reason I went about this is because there's not another book on the subject. Mm -hmm. And I really always wanted to know how it all came together. So I thought, well, you know, bugger it, I may as well put this, you know, six figure degree into, you know, get something out of it. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's from a fan's perspective. I, I was very conscious when I spoke to people who are genuinely heroes of mine, the Al Lowe's of the world or uh, mm -hmm. Mark Crow, Ken Williams himself, you know, people like that, that I didn't like fanboy out and just ask all the fan questions like, I love you and you are awesome and please tell me everything in, about everything. In a non-weird way. Yeah, but in I a non-weird way, yes, yeah. <laughs> you were my childhood, um, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. So you know, I was very conscious not to try to do that, but um, there's a certain, you know, there's the child inside me that was doing that the entire time I was speaking to some of the people. Although the more people I interviewed, the less that, um, you know, the more I could push that down. But yeah, I, I think the book's written from a fan's point of view, but I try to 
write it from the people's point of view. So it's it's mainly written. There's a lot. I, I don't know the percentage of it. Probably eighty odd percent of the book is not my prose so much as their words and how they felt and that sort of thing. So, well, that's that's actually a, a what we appreciate. We kind of want. I mean, let's face it. You are a fan, but you're also mm. in the industry. So you actually have a unique perspective while talking to them. So you mentioned that you enjoyed, uh, you were looking for fanboying, uh, as you said. So who did you enjoy talking to the most during your interviews? Uh, probably a couple of people. Um, Al Lowe uh, was the easiest interview I've ever done in my life. Uh, we, we spoke about three times actually, because he's just a, he's a storyteller. He's a naturally gifted storyteller and it just, it just rolls off. And I, I would ask one question then, uh, you know, 10 minutes later, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, he's answered that question and three or four other questions that I might've had around it, but, and he's a funny man and, um, you know, had some great insights. Um, very honest as well. Didn't um, I did find some people are really negative about their experience with Sierra, so that taints everything. Some people were really rose-coloured glasses about their experience, so that tainted everything. Whereas Al and a couple of others were very much, well, you know, it had its you know Disney-esque kingdom moments of brilliance, but it had some really hard blog work and really horrible times as well. So. Um, it's very fair in that. So Al Lowe, definitely, definitely the easiest and most enjoyable interview. The surprising one for probably adventure game fans is uh, John Romero. When I spoke to him, um, there's just a little bit in there. Um, that's one that I really struggled because I'm a huge Doom fan. Yeah. And to, to have that and be like, I'm speaking to, you know, a gaming god, basically. The man. So, you the know, man. You know, He's the man. So, um, yeah, speaking of John was really good. That was a short interview because it was just a sort of a segue type um, story there, but that was really good. Uh, probably well, Corey and Laurie Cole as well were really great to talk to. I spoke to them together. So that was really good. Yeah. Well, you actually, you said something that I want to put a, uh, put a pin in and go back to and, and ask questions specifically about, you said some, some people spoke negatively about their experience. I may ask you a question in a second, but you actually okay. answered my next question that I had, if how you would describe Al Lowe. So yeah. that's exactly as I would have expected. I've never had an mm -hmm. opportunity to talk with him. Al, yeah. if you're listening, contact me. I'd love to talk to you, <laughs> but uh, piggyback right there. Okay. Yep. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt there for a second. Please. Al sent me a beautiful email just a week or so ago that he finally finished reading the book. And he said, this is great. Now I don't have to answer the same questions over and over again. You've basically caused me to retire by writing this book. <laughs> Tell him anybody ever, ever asked him a yeah. question, go to Sean yeah. Mills. Like yeah. here it is. The here's the, here's the, the link. Yeah. Read the book. Buy the book. Read the book. Yeah. You'll learn everything that that you need. Okay. So, fanboying. Yep. You mentioned John. Anybody else that that just really just it had you tickled just talking to him? Um. Pro, uh, well, Josh Mandel because uh, mm -hmm. Freddie Farkas is one of my favorite games. I've had a bit of. Uh, I've met Josh before, so. Um, I had my fanboy moment before we started the book. Uh, one person I did not interview for the book, he was going through a lot of stuff and we just couldn't um, get our schedules together was uh, Scott Murphy. But I've spoken to Scott a, a fair bit in the past when we did our Space Quest 2 remake and he was very, very helpful and uh, really uh, such a great guy when we um, got Quest for Infamy off the ground as well and he gave us some really good advice and a few tips on that. And um, that was... Uh, speaking to him, that wasn't about that wasn't part of the book. But speaking to him as a fan was just, and I really did fanboy with Scott because I love Space Quest. So I'm like, so what happened here? Why'd you do this? Why is four darker than three? Why is three this? And you know all those all those fanny type questions that I really want to ask. So all of the W questions. What? Yes. Why? And uh, can I get some inside yeah. information? Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
All right. So this is the point to where you get a ding. Now on the count of three, I'm going to ask a question. We are going to answer it. Sierra related. First thing off the top of our heads. All right. The question is, what is your favorite Sierra game? One. Heroes quest. Oh. Two. Okay. Now I got to go Heroes quest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say Gabriel Knight one. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. So Heroes quest. Why Heroes Quest? Uh, I think there's a bit of nostalgia there. It's the first game I really played. Mm -hmm. um, I got a lot of good memories of playing that with my brothers and my and my dad growing up. Also, it's a just a great game. I, I don't think there's any bad part in that game. There's no real lull in the in the storyline. You're always moving forward. There's always something to do. You always have a, a clear goal about what to do next, which is. I think probably one of the first Sierra games up to that point where you had wasn't just wandering around waiting for things to happen. And you mentioned the the linear aspect uh, there. It was just gorgeous too. I mean, and oh, yes. they flowed the RPG with the adventure like it's just a true mm. a true masterpiece. Yes. And yeah. And all right, so let's touch touch bases as to what you were mentioning earlier. Yep. Somebody mentioned something negative about their experience. Mm -hmm. Is it in the book? Uh, a lot of them are. A, a lot of those mm -hmm. experiences are. Uh, I, I do honestly have some stories that I was asked not to put in the book. Okay. Uh, they told me off the record. Sure. Uh, but they're, they're more person, personality conflicts than Sierra, mm -hmm. specifically Sierra related. And I think that's the same in any workplace though, isn't it? You know, we, we all have people that we don't get along with and um, might have a punch up in the, you know, uh, design room or whatever a <laughs> yeah, oh, oh yeah 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 so there's a couple of those stories but um yeah by and large all the, the negative stuff's in there as well um there's a, there's a great story in there from Corey cole about just the, the amount of stress that he was under i think it was quest for glory 2 mm -hmm. and you know he's driving home at one o'clock in the morning and the cops pull him over thinking he's drunk driver and he has to explain no i'm just absolutely exhausted after working 40 hours straight and i'm sorry i ran the red light type thing so um yeah certainly some certainly some negative experiences but i try to be very fair in the in the balance of it uh, because well, it wouldn't be right to just give the you know the candy coated version of everything so yeah and and we appreciate you don't want to omit everything but also you don't want to put people in in too much of a of a, of a bad light well we'll let yeah. ken we'll let ken do that in his upcoming book <laughs> if, yes, he, if, yes. if he chooses it chooses to do that can you yep. give us something juicy give us something that's going to make us run out to to go buy the book right now okay well there's a great section uh about what i called the uh the frat the college frat um, era of Sierra. So this is prior to King's Quest and it's a pile of, basically it's a pile of 20 year olds, you know, early, late teens, early twenties, living in a town in the middle of nowhere with a group of artists, a group of creative types. And all they had was, you know, money and time on their hands. So there's, there's drugs and alcohol and all the things you don't expect from the Sierra um, that Sierra looked like from the outside. Sure. So there's some great stories in there. There's there's a really good one of uh, John Williams told me, which is Ken's brother. He ran mm -hmm. marketing for the company. And uh, John said, you know, he was away one night and uh, this rep came into town uh, selling discs or something like that. You know, remember? Oh, five and a quarter inch floppy discs. Mm -hmm. And he uh, came into town and Ken and Roberta um, didn't want to get any buy him anything buy anything from them but had took him out for dinner and got him really drunk then drove around in ken's pickup and decided one decided to put out the front of this house and said oh you know we should go vandalize this car in here and you know rips up the door and paints all these polka dots on this car and paint and whatever and drives <laughs> off and john says it was his house so it was his <laughs> car so it's his brother's place and um but the funny part about it is you hear John, uh, John says, well, you got to think of this guy. He's in like a, 
a Fortune 500 company, but a really big company CEO and his wife have taken me out for dinner, got me sloshed, and then we've broken the law. Uh, and then he's headed off. He had no idea whose car it was or anything like that. So he's gone and he's like, what's going on here? It's, and he's got these weird thoughts in his head about what this company is. But, you know, it wasn't too bad because it was just um, it was just John's car. But, <laughs> and John said the funny part was it's a really small town. So he has to drive through the town the next day with his polka dot colored car. <laughs> you know, purple and green polka, polka dots on the car. <laughs> and he's driving around. Oh, like man. That. So if that a, was a lot these of days. Stories. <laughs> yes, exactly. You just couldn't do it. That well, if you did, it'd be all over social media, and it would be an incredible story, actually. <laughs> exactly. So oh, there's a man. lot of there's there's a few of those. They're actually some of the stories that I was asked not to repeat. As one person to, said to me, "You can put these stories in print once my parents are no longer with us." <laughs> and I'm like, "That's cool, mate. You, you know, you're in your 60s, but that's cool. You know." <laughs> well, you know what understood i and i've heard some of these stories before obviously mm. they've been filtered yep. down and everything yeah. so uh mm. i'm eager to read the book i'm also yep. i've been told by ken williams mm -hmm. not he didn't tell me he told yep. everybody that his book is going to be a tell-all book yes. or at least that's the yes. way the the publisher is describing it are yeah. you excited to read his book it's almost like part A and part B. It kind of tells the same story, but it comes from two completely different angles, my book and his. So, yeah. That's where I was just about to get to. I This is the perfect time for you to release that book because now there is buzz coming from here and there's mm -hmm. buzz coming from here. It's the yeah. bookends of, of a story. And yeah. I cannot wait because the juices are flowing and – I'm so excited. I, I haven't had an opportunity to read yours, but I, I, I tell you right now, I'm going to purchase a book right now. As, wait, wait, not right now. As soon as we're done, I'm yep. going to go purchase a book. Can you do us a favor and tell me and tell everybody else where we can find your book? Absolutely. Uh, through my website, it's probably the best place, www.thesierraadventure.com. Or one word, The Sierra Adventure. And you can get the paperback, the e-back, uh, the e-back, the electronic copy of the paperback and the hardcover, um, all from there. Guys, you want you want the hard copy. I miss the old the old big boxes. Everything's electronic nowadays. Like as adventure game fans, we're into nostalgia. Put it in my hand, and that yep. that's what I'll be doing. And and I want to let everybody know too. This this isn't some sort of advertisements or anything. This is something I, like I was super excited. Uh, we were talking with with Jack, our our friend from uh, adventuregamers.com. We were talking yeah, about the book and. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're like, why are we talking about it here? Let's get on the show and let's talk about it. Yep. Talk about it there, mm. and so we're 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 stoked that uh, that we were able to get together and discuss that. And yeah. I wish you wish you the utmost success. Will there be another book? i I've got some ideas for a second book, uh, mm -hmm. for another book. Um, I'd really like to. I've narrowed it down to three ideas. I'm either going to do uh, dynamics, interplay, or legend. Be one of okay. those three, yeah, or something else, but probably one of those three. <laughs> it um, a lot of it depends on how many people I can get to say yes to interview first, uh, because of the style of narrative that I write. It's in their mm -hmm. words, so I really want to speak to those people. So um, depends how many feelers I put out. I've got some good ins with interplay. Um, so hopefully I can, that, that's probably the most likely of the three. Well, something tells me that with this book being released, you're not going to have too much issues. Something yeah. tells me. Well, so, I hope so. <laughs> Sean, hope is so. there anything else that you want to say before we head on out? Um, besides buy my book? Um, <laughs> no, not really. It's, um, uh, it's been great to talk to you. Look, I've really enjoyed actually writing the book. Mm -hmm. uh, getting to speak to these, you know, amazing people, you know, we, you know, I could sit here and wax lyrical about the Sierra games that I play over the years, mm -hmm. uh, just myself. But, um, probably one, one highlight, actually, I will point out one of the things I love most about my book is the cover and, uh, Bruce Brunais, who's a really great fantasy artist. I'll give him a shout out here. He, uh, designed the cover for me, um, did some great little, 
uh, piece. Of, sorry, I keep looking over at it because I got it sitting next to me. Um, yeah, he turn, um, he turn did some around. great. Let, let us see. I will turn it around. Oh, well, hang on, I have to get the hard co- card cover for that. <laughs> got to do it right. <laughs> got to do it right. So that's the that Beautiful. is the book. And um, those little icons you can see they represent all the different games. And there's one there that I'm like. What, why'd you put a bell on there, Bruce? What, what's the bell about? What game does that reference? It's like, ah, oh, that's a condom, Sean. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, it's a very, it's a weird gaming adventure, everybody. It's a weird, it's a weird thing. So uh, very talented artist. I'm really happy with it. I mean, the Sierra Half Dome, that's just amazing, you know? And they're going through all those bushfires at the moment as well. So if you've seen some photos of it just in the last week, it's, yeah. um, it's bare, which is really sad. But um, yeah, yeah, I'm from I'm from Southern California. I yeah. moved here, you know, about ten years ago. But all of my friends and everything, and they're they're in Southern. They're still they're having trouble all the way down there. And so, oh, okay. well, uh, ladies, gentlemen, anybody who is watching this, this is this is proof that you can follow your dream you can do what you're passionate about doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be your primary occupation it doesn't have to be your secondary occupation but if you have something that you are passionate about follow sean he -hmm. creates adventure games he writes books about what he's passionate about and we really want to thank you for inspiring us sean oh thank you that's um you're right. It, it, I think sometimes you just got to take the leap and just do it and uh, see how it turns out. So um, I'm really, I'm really happy with the book and the games, of course, but I'm really happy with the book. So um, it's, yeah, it's been a great, great experience. Well, thank you everybody. We're going to go ahead and sign off now. We wish you luck for Sean. I am Joshua with weird gaming adventure. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for sharing some time with us today, my adventure game brethren. If you liked what you heard, well, like what you heard. Consider subscribing so that you could get notifications when we put out more adventure game content. Once again, consider buying the book as well. My copy is on the way. So follow suit. Support the adventure game community, my friends. Until the next video, I'm Joshua with Weird Gaming Adventure. Tell me something about voodoo.